Inspiring Object Oriented Programming. I have to start out with a story. So I don't know if you all know me that well, most of you don't, uh, but I go to Japan every single year. And when I go to Japan, um, I sit on an Innovation Awards panel and I get to judge technology that may or may not come to the United States and I end up on a whole bunch of Japanese television that's really cool. And that being said, I'm always in Makuhari. That's the first stop. So I go from Tokyo, Narita, and I end up in Makuhari. And I always bring my Costco card because they have a Costco in Makuhari. Yes, a Costco, an actual Costco. Like really, American <coughs> Costco, Costco in Japan. Really cool place. Uh, you have to walk about a mile or so to get there uh, because I don't want to pay for Uber. And I know, I know, sorry about that, Kyle. No, it's not that. You could play so in Japan. I could. I'm going to. And I'm going to get Pikachu and I'm going to be like, look what I caught. Yeah. Yep. yeah. People will be like, got him. Uh, no, I have two. <laughs> okay. I got two. Uh, I got two Pikachu. So anyway, I end up at Costco and <laughs> I'm, I'm walking around. I end up making my way to the books area because I pass like, you know how they have like chicken and steak and everything here? Over there, it's not chicken and steak, it's sushi. It's fish and sushi. So like a platter of sushi that's literally like from this arm to this arm and maybe half the size, right? You have to, whatever, depth, like $30. It would be like $200 in the United States and it's like 30 bucks there. And whenever they're, uh, they don't want you to do something, they don't say no, because I don't know if they just don't think I understand. They'll just do this, they'll do this. <laughs> but that means no. So anyway, I end up making my way over to the books. And I happen to see this book that was clearly a Japanese version of the book Everybody Poops. Does everyone remember that book? Everybody Poops, they do, right? Complete with a flushing cover. Like not, not like a real flushing cover, I know it's Japan. But it's, uh, it, was, it, was a, it, was a, it made a sound like when you, you could press a button and it would go whoosh. I can't do it with a flushing sound very well. Um, but it was really cool and it made me think about object-oriented programming. <laughs> so, you know, people are objects, right? People are objects. And there's, there's a lot of capabilities that we have. Um, some of which uh, we want to expose and others that we shouldn't. And with object-oriented programming, I, I figured, you know, gosh, if I, if I took the human body as an example of an object, it might be an easier way to explain how objects work. So like I said, with object-oriented programming, and we'll get into what the, its three tenets are, yeah, the key thing is objects. And, and, and what we've been going over like the last like five weeks or so is taking code and just a few lines of code and packaging that together into a loop. And then that way we don't have to keep on writing the same code over and over again. We iterate through it. Then we take X number of lines of code and we package it into a function, right? And we give it a name. And that's code reuse. Well, a whole bunch of functions and variables put together, but that are related, we can package those up into a class, into an object. And a human body is very similar to that, right? You know, there's a lot of different systems that all work together, but they're all part of a human body. So if I told you, uh, you know, hey, I have a body, there's certain things that that body can do, right? You know, one of them is breathe. One of them is poop. One of them is, it has a first name, it has a last name. It has a lot of shared characteristics. But there's certain things that you might not want to expose from a body. You know, and one example of something you might not want to expose is, uh, is a lie. It'd be bad if people could just say, is a lie, false, and then he dies. <laughs> that's, that's bad, right? That's bad. Or uh, has the poop is true, and poof, right? <laughs> Those are bad things. So there's certain things that you'll keep public in that body object. One of them is, um, I don't know, first name and last name. But then things that you'll keep private, 
such as whether they have to poop or not. And I've put this all into a class. So you can kind of see how this would work. So in our body, you know, we've already gone over classes, right? You type class, and then you give it a name. Pretty easy, right? You'll see, here's some internal variables. Is alive, by default is true, because you're bored, naked, wet, and hungry, and then things get worse. <laughs> So we'll have some private variables. If I don't write private, it is, in C sharp at least, it is assumed to be private. So you can just say, like, no one can access this outside of this class. So is alive, true, is hungry, true, is thirsty, true. Make it wet and hungry. And then there's a few other internal variables we're going to track, like our bladder level and our stomach level. So are we thirsty, are we hungry? You know, the way we have to gauge that, we can't just say, am I thirsty, am I hungry? We have to have metrics inside of our body, right? Then I'll have a few things in here that are just some constants about like, what's it take before I am full? Like I have to pee, I have to poop. So max stomach level is three, max bladder level is five. And then I'll have a few other uh, internal variables, first name and last name, an enum for determining the gender. And who here, does anyone not understand enums? So we'll get into enums after this lesson, but the point here is that rather than having like some string called gender, where I pass in maybe uppercase M, maybe lowercase M, maybe M-A-L-E, all that stuff, I will define my own type that says male, or female, or undefined. I've actually had some people get really mad that I've got undefined in there. Like, really mad that I did that. Like, it became a political discussion. That was like three classes ago. It became a big deal. I'm like, look, if you're so upset about it, I'll get rid of it. It's just a line of code. Come on, stop freaking out. Anyway, and then I said, Jesus, and they got mad. <laughs> anyway, uh, so anyway, you can see the enum that I built. Now note, I had to make the pub I had to make the enum public because otherwise no one would be able to access it outside of the class. So if I gotta define my own type that I assume other people must be able to use, I have to I have to make it public if they're gonna use it. Otherwise I'll get here. So then I have a few properties here, right? Like is hungry has to poop. So is thirsty. It just returns the internal variable. But note that it's read only. You can't tell me I'm hungry. You can ask me if I am. See, it just has get. So I control your access particular properties of my body. I won't let you set them. But you can certainly query me. You can say, are you hungry? Are you thirsty? And I will answer you. But you can't tell me what I am. Does that make sense? Then I have other items such as whether I have to poop or I have to pee. Oop. And those, I don't know have to poop or have to pee as simply a variable, right? It's a calculation. Does my current stomach level meet or exceed my maximum stomach level? If it does, I got to poop. Same thing for whether I have to pee. Do I have enough you know, fluid in me that I have triggered whether I have to pee? Again, you can't tell me whether I have to pee or poop. It is a read-only property of the body. Is it read-only because you're just doing return? Because I just have a get. It's called a getter. And you're not doing a set. So right. So you have a getter and a setter, optionally. There's also, you can have setter only, kind of like a, a black box, that's it. You can set something, but that's it. You don't know what happens to it, <laughs> except that you can set it. I rarely see that pattern, but I have seen it. So, other things though, because with any object, my, I'm going to have to have some rules around it, right? Like one rule is you can't tell me whether I can pee or whether I have to pee or poop. That is a business rule of the human body. It's bad if other people control that. Whether you're alive or dead isn't even a property that you can access in this. But 
I do want you to have the ability to set the first name. Let's say you get married. Your last name or you know, it might change. Let's say you're in the witness protection program. Your first name and your last name may change. But there are rules about this. You can't just set the first name to anything. And this is why we don't simply expose the variable, which would allow them to do anything they want. We expose a property, which when you set it, It'll follow rules. It'll say, hey, if what they pass in, the value, what they want to set first name to, isn't null or a white space, then you know, we'll allow it. And we'll trim all the, the empty white space around it. But if it is null or white space, then I'll throw an exception. Name cannot be empty. I will refuse to do your work. And if anything, I will throw an error that says why I'm not letting you. Does that make sense, why you would do that? It would be bad. You can't have, I mean, even Prince had a symbol for his first name. <laughs> yeah. Now, he didn't have a last name, so he violates the rules here. But, you know, was, was Prince human? I don't know. Anyway, the point is, same thing with last name. I do the exact same thing. And you'll know, I can always get the first name and the last name. That's not a problem. And I return my internal variable. So other things I can do, I can set the gender right there. And I won't allow you to set it to undefined. By default, it's undefined. But I won't allow you to change it to undefined. You can't go from male to nothing or from female to nothing. But maybe you can go from male to female because you know there are operations for that. Look at Lady Gaga. Anyway. <laughs> no, that's not cool, is it? Oh. Anyway, oh. I'm gonna put this on YouTube and then I'll end up getting in trouble, right? So anyway, then I have my constructor. And remember, a constructor is how you can build the object. If I want to create another or pardon me, an instance of a body object. By default in C sharp, uh, you have an empty constructor, which basically nothing happens. But I don't want that, right? We're playing God here, so we got to play by some sort of rules, even if we're gods. So when we create a body, I am going to require a few things. You can't just create one. You can't create someone who's alive but has no first name, last name, or gender. So in order to create a body, you must pass in a first name, a last name, and a gender. Otherwise, you can't create it. That's it. There's no other way to create a body. So when you say var uh, fred equals new body, you can't just say new body, close end parens. You can't do it. You must pass in first name, last name, and gender. So this then sends this dot first name to first name, this dot last name to last name, and this dot gender to gender. Did you notice I am not setting the internal variables? I'm setting the properties because that forces it to go through the business rules. Otherwise, someone could pass me an empty string or a null or something for first name and last name, and I'd, I'd, I'd ignore my business rules. Be bad, wouldn't it? So whenever you're setting something inside of your class, you want to make sure that you follow your own business rules. Now, then we have our bodily functions. For example, eat. And this is a very simple function. Eat first checks, hey, do I have to poop? So number one, if I don't have to poop, then increase the stomach level by one and return true. If I do have to poop, it says, hey, I'm full. Maybe I should do something about that. <coughs> Gross. <laughs> and then it returns false. But this is really kind of how you know, your body works, right? Hey, boy, I really, you know, am I full? You know? <laughs> if I'm full, I don't want to eat anymore. If I have to poop, I certainly don't want to eat anymore. So I'm going to follow those rules. Same thing for whether I have to pee. Same thing. If I say drink. Then, if I don't have to pee, then increase the bladder level 
and you know, just for shits and giggles, I have belch, and I return true. Otherwise, I return false. <laughs> Make sense? The logic of a human body having to eat, having to drink. And then, of course, I have poop. So if I go to the body and I say, hey, poop. Well, number one, it's going to say, well, if I have to, then I will. But if I don't, I won't. You can't just tell you to poop. I mean, it would be gross. Um, but anyway, the point is, if you have to poop, it'll set the stomach level to zero. It'll say, ah, I feel 10 pounds lighter. And then return true. Otherwise, they'll say, no, nope, I don't have to poop, return false. Same thing with P. They'll set the bladder level to zero. And set the, uh, it'll write out to the console, ah, relief. And then returns true. Otherwise, they'll say, I don't have to pee. Make sense? So the three parts of object-oriented programming. Now that we understand what a body is, everyone understand what a body is? So. There's three parts to object-oriented programming. Number one is encapsulation. And it organizes your code in one single place, controls access to the functionality and the values, which is what we just built. We built a body. We put all the bodily functions and variables and state inside of a single object. Sure is easier to maintain. And I know that whenever I need to deal with bodily functions or a body, I create a new body object. That is encapsulation. It encapsulates it all. Then we get into inheritance and polymorphism, which we'll get into in a moment. But the key thing here is encapsulation. Now, you're usually going to hear these in reverse. Polymorphism, inheritance, and encapsulation. I like to think of them in reverse. You'll hear pi. I kind of like thinking about it as an eep. Because encapsulation is the base construct. Then you have inheritance, where one class can, be, can inherit from another, which you've already talked about a little bit in your previous classes. And then polymorphism, where one that inherits from the base class can become the base class. But you have to build upon that encapsulate, that initial object first. Otherwise, it makes no sense. So, just to show this working, I can go over here and say, oh, I don't know, um, var uh, Fred, Fred, I don't know your last name, sorry, equals new body. And I think I did, right? New body, is that what I called it? Yep. Doop, doop, doop. And we'll say, Fred, what's your last name, Fred? Miles. Miles. And you'll note, it actually gives me the tall sense that the only way I create a body is I must have some first name, last name, and body gender type. Then body dot gender type dot female. Kidding. That's it's actually a tech helicopter. That is not a gender. Just so you know, this is why you've been confused for so long. <laughs> um, so now I have Fred, and I'm gonna tell Fred to poop. Ah, oh, I don't have to poop. Okay, so disappointed. But I'm going to feed him because Fred likes to eat. So I'm going to say, wow. Fred, Jeez. Uh, eat. I didn't call him fat. Everyone um, said he likes to eat. So does everyone. Come on. Wait, you don't like to eat? I like cookies. I like to eat cookies. Do you like to eat? Oh, there we go. So you see, it says, yum. Yum. And I'll try it again. Fred eat. Yum! He keeps eating. Look at that. It's the never ending Fred eater. Let's see, will it work again? We have to wait for .NET Fiddle, which is terribly slow sometimes. Yum! Let's do it again. Let's keep feeding him until he's blue in the face. I go, no, 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 no. Hey, I'm full. Maybe I should do something about that. <laughs> well, maybe he should pee. I don't know. Fred dot pee. Go pee, Fred! Oh, oh, I put free dot p. Free p. Yeah, free p. I see p. Fred dot p. Let's see what he says. Is it gonna work? 
No, it says I don't have to pee. So what do I have to do? Fred duck poop. Let's see. Ah, I feel 10 pounds lighter. Cool, huh? We've just interacted with Fred. Now, we create another person, you know, with object-oriented programming, and we could say var re equals new body. And we'll say re rahimzida body, gender type. I'm still going to go with male. Sorry, guys. And I can say, okay, re dot eat. And it says, yum. So you can see, I actually have two of them here. I have a body, re, or, well, me, and I have a completely different counter for whether I have to pee or poop than Fred. So if I got rid of those eats for Fred, they'll say, hey, I'm full. Maybe I should do something about that. But me, I can continue to tell myself to eat because I am a different body. I'm an instance of a body, but I'm not the same body. So those are two different objects. Does that make sense? So could you, in the way you have your class set up, could you set two separate levels, different levels for different? I could. I could extend it. Um, in this example, I'm not going to do that. You know, so the question is, is could I change the classes around? You know, like maybe I could randomize it, right? Maybe I could have an enum for you know what your body size is, like large, medium, small, petite. You know, I, I don't know, Fat Albert. I mean, it could be anything. <laughs> um, and we could. So it's good to hear that you're thinking about that. Um, but in this example, we won't. So you can see how this works. But what about we've got encapsulation? What about inheritance? So with inheritance, maybe I have a child. A child is a body, right? So I'm going to inherit all the capabilities of a body. And I'm going to create a, another, a class that inherits body. Now, one way to read this, at least this is the way I like to read this, is a child is a body. Technically, it's inherits from, not implements, inherits from body. But I like to say child is a body because any function that requires a body can take a child because a child is a body. But a child is a little bit different, right? So a child, I'm going to add a fun or a property called is in school. And this one, I'll just do the simple get set, because by default, they're not in school, and then I could change that to whether you know, it's true or false. Very easy. And I have a base constructor that simply calls the base class's constructor. So I have my, my constructor right here for a child that then calls the base, because I have to. Because it is a body, I still have to call that base constructor. You get the same I pass the same parameters. Basically, first name to first name, last name to last name, gender to gender. Then I have another constructor that takes an additional parameter as to whether or not they're in school. So I still have to call the base constructor. But I will also set this is in school to is in school to what you set. Because I may want to create a child and not set whether they're in school or not. But I'll give you an option to set that so that you can do it all at once. OK? You leaving, Kyle? See you later. Peace out. Why didn't you just make the second one the only one? Because in school has to be true or false. Because by default, it'll be false because it's Boolean. So I just leave it that way. I could have done that. You're right. I could have said, OK, I'm just going to have this one constructor. But I still have the problem with I wanted to show that you could have multiple constructors. So that was my intent. My intent was to show you could have multiple constructors. So I could create Deshaun 
<laughs> as a new body, and I'll make him a Sean, and you'll see, I'll, I can set his gender type, not male, but if I hit, oh, I can't do, I don't want him to be a body, right? I want him to be a child. So now if I hit comma here, I can set um, that he's in school. And now I can say, hey, Deshaun, poop. So he'll come back and say, I don't have to poop. So he has all of the capabilities of a body. But he is a child. So I could say, um, Desha, let's see, console.writeline. Sean dot is in school. And he is. Now, if he was a body, I wouldn't have that capability, right? Because he's a body, not a child. Now, another example might be an adult. Maybe an adult is a body, right? An adult is a body, right? But they're a little bit different. I'm going to give them a different property. Is employed. That's an important one, right? Like as you get older, you go from are you in school or not to do you have a job or not. But they're both bodies. So I could say var mom equals new adult. And you'll see my two constructors show up. And I could say body, gender type, female. And I'm going to say false because my mom's uh, retired. And I can tell my mom to poop. And she'll say I don't have to poop. But I could feed her, maybe. As she gets older, I'll consider that. <laughs> but the key here is, is that I have just inherited all the capabilities of body. So, adult is a body. Deshaun is a body. But Deshaun is a child, which is a body. Yes? Why did it show, on the child, it just showed true for the people, and on the adult, it shows return value false? Why did it show the difference? Oh, it shows the last thing. Uh, so, okay. if, if, I, if I got rid of this part, um, let me see. Oh yeah, the, well this I called poop, oh. and that has a return value. Oh. The other thing just wrote something out to the console. Okay. If I wrote um, Deshaun dot poop over here, you'll see it'll say, I, "Hey, I don't have a okay. poop." The return value is false. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So. Now we've got encapsulation, all the capabilities of a body. Inheritance, meaning I can take the capabilities of a body and then extend upon them. That's inheritance. And then we have polymorphism. So here's the thing. Because they all inherit from body, they are body. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Now, just because you inherit from body does not make you any of the types that inherit from body. Meaning, a child, is a child an adult? No. no. Is an adult a child? Can be. Nope. Absolutely. Yeah, but we're not getting into that. <laughs> Only a Sith deals in absolutes, but we're perfect. Yeah. Um, but is an adult a body? Is a child a body? Yeah. Cool. So, and, and the yeah. only other way too, a body is not an adult. A body is not an adult because adult inherits from body. Body does not inherit from adult. So you're right. That's a good question. Um, now, if you ever have a chance, you should go take a look at the diamond inheritance issue, and that explains why a why a child cannot be an adult, an adult cannot be a child. 
Um, actually, I take that back. It explains why um, you can't inherit from multiple classes. So you can only inherit from one class. You can't inherit from multiple. You can implement interfaces, but we won't get into that in this discussion. Anyway. Inherit from more than one class, you just can't. No, you can't. Your things you inherit from can't inherit from the same class. So you can't have a common base. No, you can't one you can't inherit from more than one class because of the diamond inheritance issue. Because let's say I had two um, two classes. Let's say I've got you know class A, class B, and I've got uh, child. I'll just call it child because that's the class. I can't say child inherits, so child colon class A, comma class B because of what if class A has a two string function and class B has a two string function, both parameterless. Because the compiler doesn't know which one is the right one, you have the diamond inheritance issue. That breakdown prevents uh, the inheritance. Now, they can implement multiple interfaces because those are just the intent, not the implementation. So you could have two two-string functions with an identical signature because the code isn't any different. The intent is there. So as long as you have a two-string, then you're in good shape. But you can't implement from two classes because of the diamond inheritance. That's the, that's the problem. And it's actually a really interesting pattern. Um, I'll show it in a moment. Um, so getting back to, let me see if I can find my, my other example here. Oops, my fiddles. Uh, body class by itself, here we go. Is this it? Is this the one where I have my little examples? No. I'm trying to find my, my cute little example of the inheritance body class. Where are you, body class? Here we go. Beginning programming body class. Cool. So here's an example. The cool thing about polymorphism is that anything that inherits from body can then become a body. So a child is a body, and an adult is a body, meaning I can write a function that accepts body, child, and adult types, and it will work. Like an is health okay, and it accepts body. And it'll say, okay, went to the doctor, everything was fine. But I can also do additional things. I can say, if person that was passed in is child, then, right, they should go to a pediatrician. If person is adult, they should go to a chiropractor. But I didn't have to write three functions, did I? So I can call all the base capabilities of, you know, do they have to pee, do they have to poop, you know, is thirsty, is hungry, pee, poop, eat, drink. I can do all of those things and I can see if they are a type um, that inherits from body, such as child or adult, and take additional action. But I only have to write the one function. Because they are all bodies, I can pass them in. Yeah. So in that example, you couldn't check if the person was in school, right? If you wouldn't have access to that? Or... Well, I could. I could. And the way is, um, I could say, if person is child, which I know this isn't the best way to write this, um, then uh, I could say person as child dot is in school, and you'll see it'll figure it out. So here I basically cast it to child. And because it is a child, it's okay. Now if I said person as adult, it would blow up. Okay. If it wasn't. Now the funny thing is, is that this is a hidden issue. Because until I get to runtime, it might fail. So you want to be careful doing that sort of thing. You want to make sure you know what it is. 
which is why you would check, are they a child first, and then do the work. Never assume. Anyway, so that is polymorphism. So just recapping, you have encapsulation, which is encapsulating all the functionality related to an object, making some things private, some things public, some things read only, meaning just a getter, and some get and set, getters and setters. Then you have the ability to take all that capability and have inheritance, the I in, in E, and get all the capabilities plus add on to them or even override them, which we didn't get into, but you know, we could go on and on about who. And then you have P, your, <laughs> P, um, your polymorphism, which is the ability for any object that inherits from a base class to become an object of, or of that type of base class. So that's object-oriented programming using everybody proofs. <laughs>